Hello, friends. This is Dave Hurwitz, executive editor at ClassicsToday.com, here with a splendid new release from Naxos of American Music. Here it is, featuring Joanne Folletta and the National Orchestra Institute Philharmonic, which is a very good pickup band, basically. Well, the band of the Natural Orchestra Institute with Anna Mattix, English horn, and Timothy McAllister, alto saxophone. The program, well, there are four works. First, the most obvious one is the Piston Incredible Flutist Suite. Um, it's been recorded a million times. It's delicious. Everybody knows. It includes the dog. When the surface, the surface, the circus, it's the circus, not the surface. When the circus comes to town, although I have to confess, the dog sounds a little bit like somebody doing their dog imitation. It doesn't sound like a real dog. It sounds like someone going, ruff, 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 you know. Kind of like that, you know what I mean? <clears throat> but still, it's a delicious performance, and everybody has a good time, and the playing's really good. And it, so it's the end of the thing. It makes a lovely little, like, you know, uh, conclusion to the program. We begin with Copeland's Tenderland Suite, which comes from the opera, and it's actually probably a better work than the opera, quite frankly. It's about 18 minutes of music derived from the opera, but rearranged and recomposed completely. It's a totally independent work. It's not just like, you know, excerpts from the opera. The Tender Land, in case you're wondering, is an opera where very little happens. Um, there's 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 like, you know, it's in the country, and it's, it's the American Copeland-esque Midwestern or Western countryside sort of thing. And um, there's a party, and I think someone's cow dies or something. I don't know. It's got to happen. That's the tragic part. And there's a love duet, which is in the suite, which is quite beautiful. And it, it's, it's, it's an attractive, serene, basically mellow kind of piece with a really raucous party bit in the middle. And it's very, very nicely played and interpreted here. It doesn't get performed very often because it's not really a showstopper in any particular way. And it sounds so much like Copeland's other bits of Americana, only not, not quite as interesting maybe. Um, it, it may not be top-notch Copeland, but it's given a loving performance here. Then we've got, and this is the, the, the hot part of the program, frankly, Paul Creston's saxophone concerto. Um, it's for an E-flat alto sax. It's really, really a good piece. Wonderfully written. And like all of Creston's music, it's rhythmic and urgent and dancey and syncopated and fun to listen to. It's got great tunes in the slow movement. Actually, actually there are two versions of this piece. I mean, it comes from 1941. There's the version for full orchestra, which is this one. And there's one for saxophone and concert band, which Creston made later on. And that's also quite popular. That's probably the way the piece is best, the piece is best known. So it's very good to hear it in its concert band version. It's just I mean, a concert band version. It's regular orchestral version. That's what it is because it's really cool. Then we've got a lovely work by Ulysses K called Pietà. Um, you know, he was a a pre de Rome winner, and he spent time in Italy, and 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 supposedly this little eight minute meditations for English horn and strings, basically, um, it was was inspired by his encounter with the Pietà, you know, the one by Michelangelo or whatever, or one of those guys, and it's it's really it, it's meditative as you might expect, and sad and 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 not tacky in the least. It's beautiful. It's beautifully written, um, and really kind of, um, how would you describe it? Because, you know, Kay's idiom was kind of acerbic anyway. And so he, he manages, it's almost like, like someone like Honegger, where there's this bittersweet quality throughout the work. It's, it's, it's lovely. And it was discovered by, by animatics. It hadn't been performed since like the 1950s. And the English horn soloist here, who plays beautifully, um, found the piece and and convinced Joanne Folletta, which didn't take much convincing, I understand, um, to do it. And I'm very happy that they revived it. So that's the program. And then it ends with The Incredible Flutist. Um, the sonics are really, really good. The, like I said, the orchestra, although it's a sometime ensemble, sounds terrific, absolutely terrific and confident. And Folletta, you know, knows this stuff and knows her way around this kind of music and conducts just beautifully. So um, I would recommend that you try this. 
I really would. I, you know, this is one of those programs, you know, it's a mixed bag of things. Not mixed bag, not like in terms of good and bad. It's all good. It's all very well done. But I mean, it's a mixture of composers. And so these kinds of compilations and collections tend to be hard to find. It used to be, we would say, they vanish into the bins, you know, the record bins or onto your record shelves. But since there are no bins or shelves anymore, everything's just, they, they, they vanish into the bytes or the digi bits or whatever they are. I don't know. But it makes it, you know, an easy disc to overlook. But if you care about American music and you're interested in these works, um, and you should be, by the way, um, even if you have 100 recordings of The Piston, this is a very, very nice album. So keep on listening, friends. Thanks for joining me. Take care. <laughs>